Hey, how are you? It's Cena. Welcome and welcome back. So, I know a lot of you have been asking me for my skincare routine. It was all a lie. Guys, it was all a lie. She lied. <laughs> okay, so I lied. Nobody is asking me for my skincare routine, but that's fine. But that's what we're talking about today. As you can see from the description bar below, I've recently gotten some products to help me with my hyperpigmentation. So, if you're interested in knowing what I'm about to use, to target my hyperpigmentation and if you have hyperpigmentation as well stick around you might learn something so i tend to go through different skincare products to target different skincare concerns that i may have i have a very fair idea now what does and doesn't work on my skin and i've targeted most of the issues that i've had with my skin over the years um, my acne is more or less under control as confirmed by my esthetician at my facial on friday you know <laughs> Okay, class, I want you to repeat after me. But um, one of my prevailing concerns now is hyperpigmentation. And while I have a couple of spots on my face, uh, my primary concern are several dark marks that I have on my thighs. Now I was gonna put a picture of my thighs right up here for you guys to see the before picture and then I thought to myself, nobody, nobody wants to see a picture of my boobery legs on YouTube, right? So I'm not doing that, but just take my word for it. There are some hyperpigmented marks on my thighs. I have them there from having shaped my legs for fashion shows in the past. And the hairs that were on my thigh would grow back in grown and then I would pop I would pop the corresponding postules I would have been formed and then those would have healed hyperpigmented. And thereafter I put makeup on my legs for fashion shows and photo shoots. But they're there and I know they're there and they're bothering me. So I decided to do something about it. And thus we introduced today's haul. So there are various products that I've gotten that are primarily targeted at handling hyperpigmentation um, and I'll let you know which ones I'm going to be using on my legs and which ones I'm going to be using on my face. I think what's also very important to note before I go into the products, earlier this year I used a product from Clarins on my face for hyperpigmentation and I think that it definitely did a good job of getting rid of those marks I had at the time. Not completely but they are very much faded. However, in doing my research I discovered that um, one of the products that I was using for my acne which is benzoyl peroxide doesn't really work well with a lot of other products and especially products that target hyperpigmentation so I did not reap the full benefits from that product that I used back then. So I'm going to eliminate benzoyl peroxide from my skincare routine with the hopes of my prescription strength retinoid will be enough to keep my acne under control but also because prescription strength retinoids which are vitamin A they work synergistically with some of the other products that I'm going to be using for my hyperpigmentation now. When I get to those products I'll let you know because I think it's very important for those of you who tend to cocktail your skincare, your skincare products and your serums the way that I do, it's very important to know which products work well with others and which products clash with others because you do not, you do not want to spend tons of money on skincare products and then reap no rewards for no other fact but the fact that the products that you were using don't work well together. Pay attention and let you know which products work well together and which ones do not. By the way, even though this isn't a skincare or beauty channel, if you're interested in me doing more skincare related content, let me know. Also, below in the description bar, I'm going to put some links to certain videos from respected experts, dermatologists and cosmetic chemists who I've used as resources to help me tailor my skincare routine so that maybe their advice might help you. Without further ado, let's get into it. One of my favorite YouTubers, um, beauty YouTubers, her name is Shanine. She has a channel called Too Much Might. She always says, when you do an unboxing, it might be better just to take the products out of the box off camera and then go through them one by one. But for me, there's just something I'm not seeing an actual unboxing that I absolutely love and I hope you do as well. Not like the Dennis Rodman unboxing. <laughs> but still. Right? Oh, shit. <laughs> Alright, so here are my two boxes from Sephora and I will say again, this is one of those cases where Sephora only let me know after the fact 
that they were selling the delivery in two boxes which I wish I knew before I had clicked the order because I tend to not like my things to come in multiple packages which I would have um, explained to you guys in an earlier video about the scrubs I would advise anybody who is ordering things online to pay attention to their inbox because because they did send the email however I missed it and then when things got to my C box service I sent one invoice and when things got to customs they charged both boxes for the same amount even though one box has a ton of products and the other only has one product yeah so pay it I so my advice to anybody is pay attention to your emails and indicate to whatever service that you're using that you prefer the least amount of boxes for your delivery as possible So this is the box with the one product. This is the this is the Ute to the People Kombucha plus 11% AHA toner. Why did I get this toner? I tend to do AHA BHA peels twice a week. Currently, I use the AHA BHA chemical peel from the ordinary. However, if you are trying to target hyperpigmentation, sometimes the the chemical peeling process is an exothermic reaction and sometimes the heat from that exothermic reaction can catalyze the hyperpigmentation that you are already experiencing. Now for me personally, I don't think that has been my experience. I do not think that my peel is increasing my hyperpigmentation. However, comma, I prefer to be on the side of caution. So I am going to eliminate doing the peel and instead use a toner which will do the same thing that the peel is doing but more gently over a long term basis versus an intense chemical peel twice a week and this this is the tiny box this is the tiny box that came in this, in this box this is the tiny box that came in this box that i sadly got charged for the same amount as the other products in this box which i take full responsibility for because i did not pay attention to my emails in this instance and did not let the Skybox company and secondarily customs know that this box only contained one product. So while it pained me to pay the amount that I paid to clear this one product, I acknowledge the fact that this is my fault. Yeah, so this is the, that is the you to the people kombucha and 11% AHA tone. Let's get into the other products. Here we have Alpha Arbutin, 2% from The Ordinary with Hyaluronic Acid. Alpha Arbutin is one of the products which has been research proven to help with hyperpigmentation, while Hyaluronic Acid is what's known as a humectant. A humectant is different from a moisturizer. A humectant does not moisturize your skin, but rather helps your skin retain moisture, so it works well with other products that have moisturizing qualities. So this is, this is one of the products I'm, I've gotten to help with my hyperpigmentation. Next, we have the Super Serum Skin Tint from Ilia, which is a broad spectrum SPF 40 sunscreen. The reason why I got this particular screen sunscreen is because it is tinted. Lots of black people tend to think that they do not need sunscreen because their melanin protects them from the sun. And while that does hold some merit, you are still at a risk of getting skin cancer, getting hyperpigmentation, getting age spots, getting premature aging, and other consequences secondary to sun damage. The Ilya Sun Tint, the reason why I got it is because it is tinted because another reason why all the black people do not like to use sunscreen is because we end up looking either very pale or very blue like the sisters from Proud Family and nobody wants to walk around looking ashy all day so this particular one, I matched it to the foundation color that I use they, they allow you to do that on the Sephora website I was a little bit hesitant to get it though because in some of the comments below some people described it as a foundation and I was worried about walking around looking like I was wearing makeup all day and then it occurred to me I was concerned about that because of what people would say but let's be honest the same people who are going to talk about me wearing makeup are the same people who if I get skin cancer are gonna be like he's a big doctor and he gets skin cancer why didn't he take better care of himself why wasn't he wearing sunscreen so forget those people and let's protect our skin yeah while also not looking blue so this is the um this is the skin tint let's see if we get at least one drop out oh wow that looks a lot lighter than me but I guess when it um 
Okay, it blends out into my skin tone. Do you realize that you cannot see that? Yeah, so it's, it's, there it is, it blends out into my skin tone. I will say it has a, it smells like dog chow. I swear to God, it smells, <laughs> it smells like Purina. Ah! 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 Oh Lord. Ah. What's next? So, have, so next we have Fenty Beauty Pro Filter instant retouch setting powder. Why did I get this? Because a lot of my friends who've watched the channel, very supportive, watch my videos, they've reached out to me and they've said, we love the content, we love the interviews, but oh my God, you look greasy. Um, so I've got myself the Fenty Pro Filter setting powder to try and combat the greasiness on screen. What I love about this particular powder is that it is in the shade Coffee, which is a lot darker than all of other setting powders so that it would look more natural. One of my concerns in using powder on screen is that the powder that I did have, because I have powder, it's um, on screen it looked, I looked ghostly. I looked casket ready and that's not a look, right? So I'm hoping that the Petty Powder in the shade Coffee would and not look like Reese Tees, the Halloween special every episode. Next we have the Glow Recipe Papaya Sorbet Enzyme Cleansing Balm Makeup Melting Smoothing uh, So it's a cleansing balm For those of you who are into skincare you would know that double cleansing is very very big in the skincare community right now For a very long time I chose to not double cleanse because I do not usually wear makeup on a regular basis and I always thought that double cleansing was for people who wear makeup However, with more research, I've also come to understand that if it is you do wear sunscreen, sometimes when you do the singular cleanse using a cleanser, you still have residue of the sunscreen on your face at the end of the day, especially if you're somebody who uses your sunscreen religiously and applies second and third layers as the day goes on. So a cleansing balm is going to help you break down that sunscreen, break down those oils, break down the makeup, and allow you to have a much cleaner face after doing a double cleanse. So you go in with your cleansing balm first and then you go in with your normal cleanser and the result is cleaner, date free skin. Next we have the Fenty Beauty Matchstick in the shade Ebony. Why did I get a matchstick? So for those of you who may not have been able to tell if I'm doing as good of a job as I hope, <laughs> I do wear makeup on the channel. When you put on foundation, you nobody's, very few people, their entire face is the same color. When you put on foundation, it's all the same color and you eliminate the contours of your face and your face now becomes flat on camera. I've been able to combat that a bit by highlighting where I've put on a highlight shade along my cheekbones, down my nose bridge and on my um, lower forehead area. However, with the Fenty Matchstick, I'll be able to add back some contours where my cheekbones are um, along the inner part of my nose um, to bring my, my nose bridge forward and um, on the upper part of my forehead to push that back. <laughs> so I don't give you five head on camera every episode. Um, so that's what this is for. So, just so you know, this that I'm filming right now is actually the last episode that has been filmed. Um, we have a system here at Reese's. So, the setting powder and the matchstick will be making their appearance in season two. So, after you watch this episode, you're probably gonna watch other episodes and be like, but he's still greasy, I thought he had powder. He got the powder after those episodes were filmed. And then we have the Tasha Beauty Silken Pore Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 35. Now, another important thing to note about sunscreen, which I forgot to mention earlier, is you have two different kinds of sunscreens. You have physical sunscreens and chemical sunscreens. For a very long time, I've been using chemical sunscreen. As I mentioned earlier, with black skin and with black people, one of their major concerns with sunscreen is the blue and white cast that they get with conventional sunscreens. So, chemical sunscreens were my way of circumventing that. However, in research, I've also found out that, again, the reaction that goes on between your chemical sunscreen and the UVA, UVB rays is another exothermic reaction. So though you are being protected from the UV rays and though you are being protected from visible light, because a lot of people do not cater for the fact that visible light also causes skin damage, 
the reaction between that sunscreen and those light sources is another exothermic reaction. So though you are preventing yourself from getting most of the major issues that sun damage and UV damage causes, what you are not preventing is the hyperpigmentation that is being caused by this exothermic reaction. So the Tasha Skincare Silk and Pore Sunscreen is a physical sunscreen that does not cause the white cast that I've been so concerned about with other physical sunscreens. Um, it's pretty costly and at the time I was back in between getting this another very popular physical sunscreen that goes on play which is the Murad Invisible sunscreen and here's how things work out. At the time I was shopping at first, the way that I shop, I put things in my shopping cart for a while, I even went to marry it, and then I come back to them. And at the time, the Tatcha was out of stock. When I came back to my, when I came back to the Sephora website, the, the Body Tatcha and the Murad were in stock. When I compared them for the same price, Murad is giving me one ounce, while Tatcha is giving me two ounces, and they're both very popular, very well received, and have very good reviews. So I opted to get the Tatcha instead. Next we have the Transexemic Acid from the Inky List. This is another product that's going to help to target the hyperpigmentation. And I got this to go in tandem with this product which is Niacinamide from The Ordinary. Niacinamide and Transexemic Acid have been shown by research to work synergistically. Niacinamide it's main, the main thing on the targets is sebum production and as you all know I'm greasy and I have oily skin and my and my pores tend to overproduce sebum. So the niacinamide is going to help with my sebum production while also being able to have some effects on hyperpigmentation. It's going to work synergistically and have the transactemic acid, which is targeting my hyperpigmentation, work more efficiently. But also, here's the jackpot, niacinamide works synergistically with retinoids. And as I said to you, what I use to control my acne is a retinoid. So, between the niacinamide to control my oils, the retinoids to control my acne, and then the transactemic acid to control my hyperpigmentation, my skincare game is about to go all the way up. <laughs> so guys, that's it for the unboxing. If it is you have any questions about any of the products that I've unboxed below, comment below and ask them to me. Um, if it is you want an update a little bit later down the road, message me and let me know that you're interested in finding out how that journey is going. And always don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell notification. Love you for watching. Bye.